Good morning and welcome to Ransdale Chapel. How is everyone this morning? Awesome, awesome. Well, we have a very special panel here today. And uh, as you may know, March is Women's History Month. And so uh, we are a very athletics-driven campus for a lot of things. So I thought it was very appropriate that we would have uh, a panel discussing uh, women in sports, the impact, the influence, and uh, the legacy uh, of women in sports. And so this is a great, great thing to have today. And I'm excited for this. I want to introduce to you the moderator for this wonderful event, Dr. Lauren Willis from the Athletics Department from over in Human Performance. And so I'm going to turn it over to her. Let's just open up real quick with a word of prayer, if you don't mind. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for all that you've given us for this opportunity we have to gather together, Lord. And above all today, I pray that you are glorified. And Lord, I pray that you are uh, lifted up above all things. Lord, I pray that in this time we open our minds and open our hearts to hear and uh, to, to listen close today. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Welcome to chapel. Uh, we have a really special event planned for you guys today. Before we start with the panel, uh, we have someone really special that wants to speak to you guys. So let me introduce uh, Hall of Fame basketball coach Donna Wise. Good morning. Many of you know me as the chairman of uh, Human Performance, but uh, before uh, I gained that title, I spent uh, a number of years as the women's basketball coach at, here at Campbellsville Uni University. I was hired uh, to coach the team in 1975 at the sum of $700. And at that time, 90% of the women's programs uh, in college, basketball programs, were coached by women. In 1920, that number dropped to 40 percent. Coach Muffet McGraw, many of you may have followed women's basketball and know she was a former coach at uh, the University of uh, Notre Dame and she probably said it best. Sports is played by millions of girls learning valuable life skills. Wouldn't it be great if young women were looking up and seeing visible women leaders? So I ask you today, as you have the opportunity, to watch how women lead. So before we get into uh, questions, if we could just go around and maybe introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do now and your experience in sports. All right, my name is Sarah Thurmond. Um, right now I'm the principal of Bethlehem High School in Bardstown, Kentucky. Um, I started out playing sports at a very young age. I played basketball at Marion County High School. That's where I'm from. Grew up in a farm um, in Calvary. It's a very small town. Um, after playing basketball at Marion County High School, I got a scholarship to play underneath Coach Wise for four years at Camelsley University. Um, some of the best times of my life were spent there. Um, from there, I went on to be an athletic director at a high school for about 10 years until I went on to become a principal. And that's where I am right now. I'm Shawana Ditto. I'm from Mee County High School. What happened to me? Um, so, uh, Shawana Ditto, Mee County High School. Uh, I graduated in 2005, came here uh, to play volleyball. I did not get to play under Coach Wise, but she was my athletic advisor for a year, my freshman year. And then I had Coach Colvin as a teacher. Um, and I've been coaching from 2009 when I graduated here, fresh out the gate. Um, I started at Taylor County High School. Then I went back, I thought the Lord told me to go back home for some odd reason. So I went back home to Mee County, and then the Lord called me back here so I've been to three different schools but I've been coaching for the past 13 years uh, middle school volleyball and basketball um, I was a three-sport athlete and now I'm actually a youth pastor at Elkhorn Baptist Church settle in people I've been here a while <laughs> um, I came to Camelsville in 1986 uh, coach wise recruited me uh, at then it was Camelsville College where you're sitting was coach Finley he was the head co football coach at the time he had a house here and when we ran the campus mile, we would cut through his yard. And it, that would save, you know, time because when Coach Wise was waiting at the end, and all these, these girls can tell you, she was not happy um, if you ran an Olympic mile. Uh, so you always tried to cut off a little bit of time. So I've been here for a while. I played here. 
Um, and after uh, I played here, I stuck around as an assistant coach for, for Coach Wise, and I was able to uh, be here when these girls all played, and it was a, it was a blessing to be able to watch them play. After the, I, I did, during that stint of time, uh, teach elementary school at, at Camelsville Elementary, and I helped coach uh, Camelsville High School there for seven years, but then I ended up coming back here full-time. Um, I've watched the progression of Camelsville University from Camelsville College to Camelsville University, from Coach Finley's yard becoming the chapel. Um, I've watched this, this university grow and the great things that have happened here. Um, so it's been a blessing for me to be here. It's been a blessing to to know all of these, um, the women that, that have influenced me. Obviously, Coach Wise has been a huge influence. Um, so that's that's where I'm. I'm the, currently the, the head coach at, uh, at here with the girls <laughs> and uh, the head women's basketball coach here. And uh, I feel like it's a blessing to be here. So that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. You coach here coach at CU. Here. Yeah. I'm a Christy Thomas McGuire, born and raised here in Campbellsville, went to Taylor County High School and played basketball, was fortunate enough to come to Campbellsville University on scholarship and play for both uh, Coach Colvin and Coach Wise, and will tell you that it was some of the best years of my life, and still to this day, talk to teammates uh, every single day. This is uh, one of my dearest friends that we played together here at Campbellsville, but once I graduated from here, I went into uh, broadcasting, sports broadcasting. Um, so when you talk about women in sports, I was in a male-dominated field and still continue to be in a male-dominated field in a lot of different ways. So um, I have a really interesting perspective in, in how to kind of navigate that world a little bit. But um, So I worked at WKYT in Lexington as a sports anchor for a while, and now I work for the UK uh, Sports Network, which involves a lot of different things, but um, mainly it involves um, me hosting a weekly TV show on uh, affiliates across the state of Kentucky, really can be seen anywhere, but it's called BBN Game Day, and that's an all-encompassing show about UK athletics. And then on football Saturdays, I host the uh, Countdown to Kickoff, which is a pregame show that happens on the UK network across affiliates all over the state of Kentucky and Indiana, Tennessee, um, and also can be heard online as well too, so y'all better be listening. But two hours prior to kickoff, before every football game, I am on with two former players, and... Um, we get you ready for the football game. So, and I can tell you at last count, I was the only female to have a pregame show um, on the radio in the SEC. So um, there's, it, it's, and it's not because it's me, but it, it's, it's nice that there's just a distinction that the University of Kentucky was willing to let a female take on a role like that, especially with football when you don't see a whole lot of that kind of thing going on. So, and that's what I'm currently doing um, amongst other things, taking care of kids and all those <laughs> kind of things that moms do when they have uh, lots of juggling going on. But um, I appreciate being here and love this. I, I have been exactly where you all are, having to come get, check the box to get that here, but hopefully you'll be able to get something out of today with us so we're happy to be here my name is Shannon Wathen I am currently the uh, softball coach here at Campbellsville University uh, I'm originally from Meade County a small town called Flaherty uh, I was recruited by coach wise and coach Colvin to come here back in the mid 90s when this was still Campbellsville College and um, there were very few students uh, here at that time so I've been fortunate enough to see a lot of growth on this campus as is Ginger and um, it's, it's truly been a blessing to be here. After I graduated, I worked a year on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., and then uh, came back as an assistant on the women's basketball staff uh, with both Ginger and uh, Coach Wise. And uh, I also coached volleyball for two years during that time. Uh, the softball job opened uh, after my second year here, I think, and um, uh, Mr. Deaton was the athletic director at that time. Uh, he hired me initially and then Rusty Hollingsworth was the athletic director that uh, gave me the opportunity to move to softball and I did softball and uh, assistant women's basketball for about nine years and uh, then I took over uh, softball full time and have been doing that um, for quite a while now. So, um, you know, I've been very fortunate in, in my life to play for strong female coaches once I got to college. Um, you know, who have influenced me, and, um, you know, it, it's really affected how I've coached, and, um, you know, hopefully, you know, we're able to, you know, give back and, and do a good job and, and give women the opportunity to do some of the things that we do. Awesome. Well, it sounds like all of you are pretty accomplished, 
And uh, I would say that some of you might even say that sports had an impact on that. So these questions, some of them have specifically to do with sports, some of them with uh, female impact in sports. So these questions are for any of you. You can jump in as you want to. The first one is, how have your experiences in sport impacted the trajectory of your life now? Um, I think when we're sitting here talking about, and, and we were talking before it ever came on, playing for a, a strong coach like Coach Wise, with our society today, I think we, we don't think it's okay to push people. We don't think it's okay to ask people to, to reach their limits or to reach their potentials. Believe me, she didn't mind doing that. And uh, I think by that you can see the, the people that have gone through her program have, have succeeded, have excelled, and there's so many more people that could be sitting here in these seats today. So I think sports, more than anything, made me tougher, for lack of a better word. And I think it made you tougher in all aspects of life. And um, so for that, and I hope, I know we've got most of my basketball team here today, and I know Shannon's softball team's here today, and a lot of other athletes, students that are just trying to get through. I, I'm hoping that if you have a strong female influence in your life or uh, even any type of a sport, um, male, female, whatever it be, that you can just learn to, quite frankly, just be tougher. There's not a day goes by that I don't say that, that um, I did not, that sports does, did not impact my life in some way and how I am and who I am today. I had a couple of injuries that I dealt with when I was in college um, that probably could have or should have been some season ending, career ending injuries that um, were really tough to try to fight through. I wouldn't change a thing if I had it to go back and do it all over again. But what I think sports probably more than anything gave me were relationships. And sometimes I think you have to be a little bit older to kind of be able to reflect back on it. You don't know it necessarily at the time, but you start to gain a real appreciation for it the older that you get I think that you say um, relationships are something that I take with me for a lifetime that were because of sports that I wouldn't have had otherwise and then the life lessons and as corny and as cheesy and cliche as that sounds the life lessons that I learned through athletics and through watching and seeing uh, strong female leaders go with me every single day and again I think at my age and where I am in my life I reflect back on that an awful lot and think about that a lot more than what I might normally as, a, as I'm younger. Um, but there's not a day goes by that I don't say that there, whether it's discipline or whether it's hard work or whether it's um, resilience or something like that, I, I will absolutely attribute that back to, to playing sports and being involved in athletics. I think, I think that... Uh... I, I think Coach Wise and Ginger probably have known me the longest up here. And the person that I was when I came to Campbellsville College is a completely different person I was when I left Campbellsville University and when I returned and even throughout my coaching career. Um, you know, I was a very introverted, shy kid when they recruited me and when I got here. And I think they empowered me um, to expect more and be more. And I think that I, you know, slowly probably to them responded to that, um, you know, both on the basketball court, but in my personal life as well. And I think, you know, I thank them. I, I think a lot back to those moments and who I was um, as a 17, 18 year old kid and where I'm at now. And I owe a lot to, uh, to that to them. I had some really great coaches when I was younger, but you know, their presence in my life and the, the demand for, you know, excellence or being able to achieve more, uh, empowering me, giving me confidence, um, sometimes demanding and the discipline, you know, realizing the discipline that it took to be successful, not just athletically, academically. Um, and I think that's one of the things that I try to pass on as I coach is that I want our kids to be successful when they leave here. And, um, you know, that's really important to me that they feel like, you know, they're empowered wherever they go. If it's in a, you know, profession that is male dominated, just because it always has been that they walk into that room and they're empowered and, and feel confident that they can do that job. And then when I, <clears throat> you're going to have to bear with me. I have a terrible coat. Um, when I recruited her, she was playing at a three position, which if you're familiar with that, she's out on the wing and she sort of 
involved in the, in the play, but not really as far as directing her team. And I saw the potential <clears throat> with her to have a 6-1 point guard. So her freshman year, she was moved into a point guard position. And as many of you know, the point guard has their leadership. They have to be vocal. And I think that if anything Shannon learned from her experience uh, with that was, you know, finding her voice. And, you know, she went on to be an All-American. And uh, we were able to do things at her position uh, with her size that many schools couldn't do. Like, and I also had a locker right next to hers, and so I can I can attest to her growth as a person, even outside of basketball. Um, that, that that's everything she's saying is exactly right, and that's the beauty of athletics. That's the beauty of sport that you can do that. Where I, she would hardly even look at me or speak to me, and then now we're the you know we're best friends and and talk every day and that kind of thing. But that happened over time, and was uh, because of basketball that that happened. I add to that too, you know, when Shannon's talking about the hard work and the discipline, um, you know, that's a huge part of what you learn when you're in college playing a sport, whether it's softball players or basketball players or soccer players, you know, you're on a schedule throughout that whole day. You have morning workouts, you have study hall, you have two-a-days, you have weightlifting, and, you know, you're going to take those experiences with you for the rest of your life. And even today, people will say, you're a principal and you have three kids, a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, and a 7-year-old. But I don't know anything any different. You know, I learned that throughout the experience in college. You know, you had to get up. You had to be successful. You had to be tougher. Um, like what Ginger said, there was no other choice. Um, and you were leading other people, and they're watching you every second of the day. And I think about me leading the school as a female leader who's predominantly, you know, male dominant in the principal role. And then I have two daughters who also are watching every single thing that I do. So, you know, I want to show them and I want to show females in my school what it means to get up, what it means to work out on my own, what it means to, to try to eat right and be a good person and take care of yourself, take care of other people. And, you know, I learned all of that through sports. Absolutely. So for me, uh, in athletics, knowing your role was important, okay? And so I was, I was the type of player um, that if I came into the gym and I was quiet, they knew something was wrong. But I was also the type of player that if they knew that every drill that we did, I was gonna be the one that was gonna hype everybody up. I was gonna be the one, y'all know those people that just get on your nerves, just hype everybody. I'm, we're having a bad day, but you wanna hype everybody up, right? So I was that type of player. Um, and so that has followed me into coaching. So now that we're down, if we're down by two, you best believe that Shawana Dell is gonna get everybody hyped up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, even today, like even as a youth pastor, I get the privilege and the opportunity because I know my role uh, that I get to hype people up for Jesus. Like I love getting people excited about life. And so that's key. Even in athletics, you need people in your life that know how to push you, that know how to accelerate you. Um, but I knew my role and athletics taught me that. Uh, so as a female that's been involved in athletics, and some of you have been involved a little longer than others, we're not naming any names, but um, <laughs> what are some of the improvements and changes that you have experienced from your time starting in athletics to now? Well, that's a loaded question for somebody like me who's been in broadcasting and um, it's not unusual to walk into a room to a press conference or somewhere where you're the only female in the room. It happens a, a lot. And I will say that um, I think what's changed about it is that um, for, for me in that perspective is that a, a lot of these networks and a lot of these media outlets want to give women a chance. They want to give females a, a role. And so um, they're looking for females who can stand on their own two feet and, and, and can do the job. But what I've said about it is, for me for years is I didn't want to be the, I didn't want you to turn on the television and go, who is this dumb blonde doing sports? Good Lord, can't they get somebody else that knows what they're talking about, knows what they're doing? This is crazy. She doesn't even know how to, how to read these football highlights. She doesn't know what she's doing. So for me, it was a matter of credibility and um, preparation are the two big things that are so important to me as I do my job every single week. When I get ready for a football game, um, it's my job to be the quarterback to help two former athletes, a former quarterback and a former defensive end, talk about football and talk about UK football specifically. And I have to be prepared to do that because I have one shot. I have one shot 
to ruin it for any male listeners that we might have out there. Fe not so much females. I think females can be a little more forgiving in those situations, but I've got one shot to get it right for any male listeners that are out there. And the very second I get it wrong, that's it. I've lost you and you may never come back because you think I don't know what I'm talking about. So um, I think what has... That, that was something I established for myself very early on, and I think... Um, has changed for women in, in sometimes not, not such a great way because I will tell you that that I, I hear it all the time and I see people all the time and you all know it. You all watch games where you didn't, you thought, I don't like this chick down the sidelines at all. She's terrible. Who fed her those questions to ask? Somebody told her to ask those questions. Um, so I think that, that level of um, involvement as a female um, has changed maybe not for the good in, in a little bit of a negative way in, in that regard. So um, there are more opportunities. There are more females in roles like that. But I will say that, that those females have to take advantage of that role and, and do it justice uh, for all the rest of us that are out here trying to do that as well, too. I want to give a shout out to Christy. Her senior year, uh, and Christy had a desire to, you know, to move into sport broadcasting, and she won the uh, Women's Basketball Coaches Association Robin Roberts Award. And many of you may be familiar, she's uh, with one of the major channels. But in doing that, I, I remember that uh, someone had said something about, well, you know, she's from Kentucky. Her, her draw just isn't gonna go, but it just shows the drive that Christy, you know, had uh, in overcoming that stigma that was, you know, placed, you know, on someone from our state in, in being where she is. And, and if you've not had the opportunity to watch her, she does a wonderful job. Thanks, Wiz. I would probably say the same thing about being in an athletics uh, position as an athletic director at a high school. You know, we had about a thousand kids at our school and I would walk into meetings and there would only be one female there and it would be me and that's it. And I think a positive that I've seen is there are a lot more females in athletic director roles now. Um, I'll go to the meetings now as a principal and there's about five females sitting in there where there were just one just a few years ago. So I think we see female leadership stepping up now and understanding that they can do that. They do understand sports. They can represent their school well. They can represent both females and males well. Um, and I think that's the positive that I've seen um, on my end, specifically in terms of athletics and female leadership. Well, we've seen a lot of positive changes, I think, but there are still there's still room for, for improvement. So um, you specifically, or females in general, what are some challenges that we still face today? Okay, um, so, so one of the major challenges for me um, is representation, uh, and that, that's hard for me. Uh, and it, it doesn't matter where, where I go, what I do, um, but representation matters. Uh, and we've seen that, that more in 2022, um, where obviously you can be in a room full of, it doesn't, again, color does not matter, but representation does. Um, and so we gotta get to a point in our lives where, so one of the challenges for me is being intimidated when I walk in, whether it's all males, whether it's all, all white people, whether it's all black people, whether it's all, whatever it may be, but representation matters. So one of the challenges that I have faced as an African-American woman has always been representation. I, I would build off of that because I think intimidation is, um, is big. That happens a lot, right? Sarah's the same way. You could walk into a room full of principals or athletic directors. You can walk into a press conference and be the only female in the room. But this is where I go back to my preparation, me doing my homework, me making sure I'm prepared so that when I walk in and I want to ask Mark Stoops a question at the UK football press conference, I don't get this look like, oh, great, she's asking a question. And, the, you know, everybody rolls their eyes because they don't want to hear what I have to say. My question's good and it's valid, and I know it is, and I have to have that confidence going in. But the only way to get there and the only way to get a seat at that table is to um, – is to show that you know your stuff and to show that you are prepared and ready to go. So I'll raise my hand and ask a question in a heartbeat in a press conference if I think it's the right question, if I think it's a valid question, 
Um, and if I think I'm not going to get blown off by the, by the coach to say that was ridiculous, that's a stupid question, I'm not asking it. Um, I see it happen to men all the time. They get, you know, the coach will say, next question, I'm not answering that, and they'll move right on. Um, so, but, so the preparation is key, and that can help you to not be as intimidated in that environment so that you know that you are ready to go and that, um, again, it's that credibility. It goes back to that credibility as well, too. Preparation is key. Yes, I'll add to that too. You know, you said the word confidence, and I talk about confidence at school 24 7. If you walk into a room and you have confidence and you present yourself well, and you know, your shirt's tucked in, we talk about this at school all the time, your shoulders are back, your shirt's tucked in, you're looking people in the eye, you can do anything you want to in that meeting. But you got to start out with confidence. That is so incredibly important. Um, and we talk about when you look good, you play well, you perform better on test, all those little things matter. Um, and that's a big part of what, you know, I push at school every single day is having that confidence and ability to go in and own a room. And that's one thing that Sarah Higdon had when she played. And, you know, I attribute that to, you know, to the work, work ethic. You know, she shot hundreds of, of shots you know, throughout her high school career when she came here. And uh, that confidence that, you know, I had in her, she had in herself, knowing that if it came to a big shot, she wanted it. Her freshman year, she, you know, you know we, she took a big shot for us. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something that she had prepared herself for. And I think that's so important is your preparation. Um, confidence, that's the one thing that keeps coming out, and uh, we'll talk about that. The, and I think Christy said it the best, nobody can take your confidence. Nobody can give you confidence, and nobody can take your confidence away. You're the only person responsible for that. So if, if you want to be confident in something, you want to go out and you want to succeed in something, then prepare. Um, and if you're prepared, no coach can tell you that you, you're not a shooter. Nobody could have told Sarah she wasn't a shooter. She was a shooter, and if you'd walked up to her and told her she wasn't one, she wouldn't have believed you because she knew she was one. Uh, nobody can tell Christy that she can't ask Mark Stoops questions. I've known Christy her whole athletic career, all through high school, all through college. You can't steal this chick's confidence. You never have been able to. And those are things that, that are ingrained in. And I think when you're in athletics that you can, and not just athletics, you can go out and you can study for your test. And when you walk in there knowing that you're confident to take that test. So confidence comes from within. Nobody can steal that from you. And um, I think that's something that's maybe evolved through women's uh, leadership as well. If you know you're prepared and you go in a room and you know you're prepared for, for myself, if I know I'm prepared when I go in a game. Um, until this year, I was the only female coach in our league. Uh, they did add one more. And, um, at, um, and I think maybe they're leaving the league, so I think I'll go back to being the only female coach again. But it's okay to have that. It's okay to be that. But uh, I think the one thing that you need more than anything is just to have that work ethic ethic and establish confidence in yourself. Don't rely on somebody else to give it to you. This one's a little more lighthearted. Any uh, stories or experiences? Yes. And, yes. From <laughs> yes. Maybe here or, or yes. any sport questions. <laughs> Speaking of confidence, Coach Wise told Shannon she couldn't add during a game one time, and I think Shannon probably wants to tell that story. So no. I was there for yes. that. <laughs> yes, we were there. You're much for better that. at math now than you were then. Uh, well, Debatable. Yeah. <laughs> Math was not my strong suit. <laughs> that was Let's one of those there. questions you didn't want answered anyway, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you always, <laughs> there's a lot of those questions that you throw well, at players that always, aren't to be in. I always say this. I think, you know, we reflect back on our experiences and, um, you know, as coaches, and I think a lot of times even like with my own mother, like the stuff that we remember when we were growing up, you know, she doesn't necessarily find as funny as we did as children and we survived it and um, you know so obviously there's always stories that we tell that uh, and my kids do the same thing so and, and former players that one sometimes I don't even remember saying in the heat of the moment <laughs> and two you know that you wish you could kind of take back and you know maybe say a different way but um, you know I think those are the opportunities uh, the travel those moments where you have in huddles that make no sense and questions you don't want answered that, you know, you remember and you, you reflect back on. And I know we always get a good laugh at that kind of whizzes expense a little bit. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those games where we did not play well. And, uh, you know, somebody had to be, you know, responsible for that. So, 
Um, I take plenty of responsibility for, for a lot of those um, events and opportunities, but, um, you know, I'm better for it. And, um, you know, Wiz and Ginger, well, Ginger and Jenny, another young lady that played for us, like to, you know, razz Wiz a little bit about that. So, but, um, you know, I think those just, are... Just to tell a little bit about the story. We, okay. we were in a game, and Shannon was in trouble, and uh, she was not even playing at that point. And um, Coach Wise was in the huddle, and the team had gone on a run, like 10-0 run. I, I don't really remember. But she turned around and said to Shannon, how many points has their team scored in the last three minutes? And how many points have we scored in the last three minutes? And, and the whole team went like this. <laughs> yep. And I just Please stared. Please answer it right. Please stared at her. <laughs> answer the right question. And then Coach Wise answered, never mind, you can't even add. Right. So I couldn't at that point. Yeah, she was Shannon like, was in big trouble that day. <laughs> trouble yeah. big trouble so if you're running campus miles she probably can't figure out if you you know how many right. laps no, she you've been not. around so stop little watches unsure. off a little, little unsure i will tell you a story from a broadcasting perspective when i talk about being the only female in the room is um does anyone know um do you all know tim couch does anybody know who tim couch is um it makes me feel old if you don't. But um, anyway, Tim Couch is, uh, was a quarterback at the University of Kentucky who was drafted uh, number, one, number, went number one in the NFL draft to Cleveland Browns. Um, and I was going to cover his first start in the league. And so I was working for K WKYT out of Lexington. I was going to cover his first start, which was happening in Nashville with the Tennessee Titans. And so the whole setup normally for a game would be, so you play the game and then there's a press conference area where they'll bring an athlete to, um, and oftentimes um, in the NFL only, this does not happen in college, but in the NFL, the locker room will open and people can go into the locker room and go snag an athlete at their, if, if she was sitting at her locker, I could go talk to an athlete right here with a camera in their face where, while we're inside the locker room. So... Um, this was my first experience with that. It was very young and green in the, in the business. And so I've got my cameraman with me and there's a ton of us there. There's a boatload of media that are there that want to talk to Tim Couch. And so um, the door, I could actually see the door into the locker room as, I, as I'm waiting in this sort of, um, they had us in, all packed into a little small room off of the locker room waiting to go in. And so I saw the door swing open and what I saw inside that locker room, I thought, oh, what am I, I'm going to have to go in there. It was a lot of nakedness and everyone was walking around like no one cared. I mean, no one cared. So there are grown men, grown men in this locker room, all walking around with nothing on. They're going back from the shower to their locker rooms and all this. And I'd heard horror stories about stuff like that too, about how sometimes they do this on purpose and they don't care. And they try to put females in interesting positions um, <laughs> to make them uncomfortable when they're in that kind of environment. And I've, so now all of a sudden panic sets in where I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna have to go in there. I was, okay, how are we gonna handle this? What are we gonna do? I'm gonna walk in, I'm gonna walk in like this. I'm gonna walk in and look straight ahead. I'm gonna look, I'm like, where's Tim, where's Tim, where's Tim, where's Tim? I'm gonna find Tim, I'm gonna walk straight to Tim and I'm not gonna look at anything else. And how, like, how can I be this 20-something-year-old that's going to walk into this locker room and have to look at all? <laughs> the, I will never be the same. I will never leave Nashville the same ever again. And I, the panic that I had at that moment, and no one else cared because I literally was the only female in that room, and my cameraman was a man. And so I thought, this is terrible. And um, the, 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 it had to be divine intervention. I'm sure of it. It was... It was the Lord Jesus himself showed up in Nashville and they, the p media person walked out for the Titans and said, well, so many of you want Tim. We're just going to bring him out here and put him at this table. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So I, that was like the best day of my life. Um, but I remember leaving. So in other words, I did not see anything that I should not have seen that was inappropriate. They brought Tim out. We all got the press call. We all, we all got what we needed, got a soundbite and we're able to leave. But I remember driving home so relieved thinking, okay, I could be put in that position again, and what am I going to do, and how am I going to handle it, and how am I going to go into that environment, and, and again, <laughs> that comes back to confidence, but in a weird sort of way, where you're just like, I got to get a story. I'm not going to let everybody else get the story and get Tim Couch post-game press conference, and I'm not going to get anything from him, because I'm too um, worried about walking in and seeing a bunch of grown naked men. I mean, you know, the Lord made him this way, so let's just go. I mean, like, we'll, we'll go after it and, and get the story, so... Um, 
but panic absolutely set in. But, but again, life lessons and things that you learn along the way about how would you handle it differently? What would you do in that environment? How are you going to process that to make sure that you get the story? But listen, I was worried about what my eyes were going to see that day that they could never unsee. Okay, so what is one piece of advice, and I think this question's for all of you, just one piece of advice that you would either give to current athletes, which some of you are coaching now, and you may do this every day, um, and aspiring coaches, those people that want to work in athletics, uh, what kind of advice do you have for them? Well, I would say probably seize the opportunity. Um, there's going to be things that you're going to be scared of, like what Christy said, that are going to pop up on your radar. Because you're playing sports in college or in high school, people are automatically going to assume you to be a leader, which you are. So when they ask you to do things, I would say seize that opportunity. Figure out how you can do it and then execute that. You can only learn from it. You can only grow from it. Um, I'll give an example this week. We went to the Fifth Region Banquet, and um, one of the people there that was running it had asked my 16 year old to lead the, the invocation and her eyes got this big she's like mom I can't do it I can't do it I can't do it I'm like yes you can do it you can do it this is an opportunity for you they're going to remember you they're going to remember your name you're going to learn from this you're going to grow from this you can do this and she ended up doing it and she's had compliments all week here there and everywhere because of it so I think if you're given an opportunity take that opportunity figure out how to do it muster up that confidence you're only going to learn from it, you're only going to grow from it, and you're only going to gain valuable leadership skills from it. Uh, for my current team especially, buy your coach a lot of gifts. Like, if, if you want to show, you want more playing time, buy your coach gifts. And um, I think that's the best, the best advice I could give to my team right now. But um, other than that, the best advice I can give you is don't judge yourself by the person sitting next to you. Don't judge your progress by the person sitting next to you. Judge your progress by you. And ever how slow you go, ever how fast you go, just be you. And if, if, you're, if you're getting better and if you're improving, then that's, that's, that's okay. Don't sit and think, my self-worth depends on um, if I'm as good as Christy or my self-worth depends on if I'm as good as Shannon. It's not that at all. Your self-worth depends on how good you are. And that's not just athletics. That's if, if you go take a test and, and the person next to you does, does so much better than you. Did you do better on that than you did last time? Or did you do your best on that? Just let your self-worth be your self-worth. Don't let it be somebody else's. My thing, my, the best advice I could ever give anyone is have a bigger picture mentality. Uh, and my bigger picture mentality for any girl that I come in contact with, yes, I want to win ball games, but at the end of the day, I want them to win in life. And I think we can all attest to that. Um, you should have a bigger picture mentality in your life right now, uh, regardless of who's around you, regardless of what you're going through, your bigger picture mentality, what are your goals? What goals can you set for your team? Um, for if you coach middle school or high school or college level, the students that you have under you should always know that there's something better, there's something more. Um, so always have that bigger picture mentality in your life. Yeah, and I think just continuing to, you know, empower our athletes to be, to be confident, as, as the panel has said, and, you know, really, as Sarah said, take advantage of all those opportunities. I think back in 22 years of coaching, some opportunities that I passed up for, you know, lack of confidence or feeling like I wasn't, you know, enough, I think, in those situations. Um, you know, there are a lot more female softball coaches now today. Uh, the sport of softball has grown by like 300% in the last, you know, four to five years. Um, so as the amount of young people that are playing softball uh, as younger athletes in the middle school, into high school and college, it has seen tremendous growth. Um, so I think discipline that it takes to be successful, uh, not viewing discipline as punishment. When you look at organizations, universities, athletic teams, uh, individuals that are successful in their own right, in business, uh, academically as well, those kids and those athletes and those students are disciplined. And I think that's really kind of the biggest thing that uh, we have a lack of uh, today is that the discipline that it takes to be successful in whatever you choose to do in life, male or female. And, um, you know, I think that's what I try to convey to our team and, and throughout our culture and our program, uh, the amount of work that it takes to be prepared to get the confidence that it takes so that no one can steal your confidence, as Ginger says, 
you know, it's easy to, um, you know, blame somebody else for failures or that lack of success when it comes down to a lot of, you know, seizing those opportunities and being prepared in those moments. Y'all have heard me say it. If you do your homework, you'll be prepared. If you are prepared, you'll have confidence. You know, the, you know, when I think about my career, and it's nice to have notes because when you turn 70, you're excused for that. But, you know, in reflecting on my career, I think that there's three things that, that you know, I would share with you is, you know, first you have to have a shared vision. And that vision, you know, you have to put that out front with your staff, uh, with your players, with your administration, and with your community. Because, you know, it's those, those are the, the people that are important to you uh, and important to your success. And the other thing is that everything starts with a goal, you know, a dream, because you have to have a blueprint from which to work, uh, whether that's in your program, whether that's in your household, wherever you are in your career. And then the, the last thing is that everyone has to accept ownership uh, in that. Well, I really appreciate you all being here today for us. Can you all give them a round of applause for our panelists? Um, as, uh, as Jamie said, this is Women's History Month, and this was one of the planned events for that. We have one more thing for you guys, so um, let me introduce to you our provost, uh, Dr. Donna Hedgepath. I think I'll walk over here and not stand in front of these ladies. Uh, thank you all. This has been great. And Women's History Month is something to celebrate. Um, I've been asked to introduce a new award. And uh, usually, if an award is named after a person living, you are the recipient of the award. So here we go. And I'm loving this because this Donna Wise is impossible to surprise. I think you're surprised. Yes, yes. The Donna Wise Legacy Award has been created to honor the leadership and success of women in sports. This award will continue to be given every year in her honor to someone in or connected to the Campbellsville University community or um, just the community in general. So she is our inaugural recipient today. So I do have a few comments, and, and I have the, the stats and all the details, so I'm not going to take too much time, but I'm kindred spirits with everyone up here, and Donna Wise, even though I'm not an athlete, I'm one of the, the, the musicians at Campbellsville who connected with many athletes here on campus and other female friends. Went to school with, with Ginger, actually. I came in 88, so you were a little ahead of me. But as someone who is the only female in senior administration here at Campbellsville and in other places around, I remember my first day in my office, I think my first week, Donna Wise was one of my first visitors. I don't know if you remember, you were so excited. This was a few years ago. And um, she was so supportive and happy for me. Um, and it's, it's interesting that, you know, when you are a strong woman in leadership, it's so helpful. My advice would be to find a mentor, find someone who uh, will push you as a coach or as a teacher. So just a few things um, about Donna Wise, because she's mentored so many and not just women in sports because it goes beyond that. And as I've said, she's inspired me. She's probably one of the strongest, most stubborn, most determined women that I've ever met. And I, I, I kind of want to put it, a word in. I wish she would just adopt me. I, and just She'd take me as her daughter. Max needs a sister. But we could talk about that later. She's a great cook. But Donna Wise has served 32 seasons at 661 wins. That's about, well, the idea is almost 71% of all of the games that she's played, she's won. This is one of my favorite uh, facts about Donna Wise in women's basketball. In the state of Kentucky, as far as college basketball wins, she's one of the most winningest coaches uh, in the state of Kentucky for college basketball. The only three folks in front of her are 
at Off Rupp, Denny Crum, and Ed Diddle, correct? That's a pretty good group to be part of. So serving at one institution in Kentucky, uh, along with three other men, she's right there. I looked for some statistics that just combine women and men for the most of everything, and every time I would Google winning as coach, they always mentioned men's basketball. So I had to be very specific just to get to the, the women's uh, data, but that's something else we can work on as we uh, move into the future. Um, she serves now as our chair of the Human Performance Department. Some of you are familiar with her. Um, she's taught here for many years. She's a professor. Uh, planning to retire, so she says, in May. We'll see how that goes. And uh, continue to have an influence here uh, at Campbellsville University. Some of you may have been around in December where they named the newly a surface basketball court, the Donna Wise Wiz basketball court. So if you haven't seen that yet, that was her most recent um, honor, I believe. So I won't ramble on too much because I want her to come accept this award, say a few words, but she is our first inaugural recipient of the Donna Wise Legacy Award to honor the leadership and success of women in sports. Congratulations. <laughs> I wasn't expecting this, but I certainly appreciate uh, uh, the award and look forward to uh, those that follow me uh, with the uh, naming uh, of the Legacy Award. And, you know, I just, Campbellsville University has been my life. You know, 47 years I've been a part. And uh, when I stepped away from basketball, I knew we were in great hands. And, and I think I do the same as I leave in, in uh uh, May as far as my chairmanship. Uh, I always told my players that what you are is God's gift to you and what you do with your life is your gift to God and, and I certainly hope that that uh, what I've done here in my 47 years is uh, has been worthy of, uh, of, of him. Thank you. Ladies, thank you so much. Lauren, thank you. And Donna, we love you. Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget the QR code. Pull up your CU app. Scan that right now so you get your credit for it. Uh, thank you for being here today. Same time next week, we have CU alum Matt Flanagan will be here. So uh, be sure to come back.